What's that? Should I say something? David, you look very, very nice today. We're live? Okay. All right. Is it, is it live now? Third speaker of the series, uh, Tony Pinto. I've, I've known you for years. I really met you from Chapman. Yes. Uh, you gave me coffee uh, between classes. Yes, uh, we did. Uh, now Tony teaches for us, and uh, it's a great opportunity to see his body of work. And I'm interested to hear about it. So thank you. Thank you, David. <laughs> and uh, so thank you, David. Thank you for Coast, Coastline Community College Art Gallery for inviting me here to come in and speak with you all. And thank you all for coming in. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to uh, look at some, some art stuff. So uh, as David said, I do teach here at Coastline. I've been teaching some online classes, uh, art history classes. Uh, there's one of my students here, Kasha. Um, I'm also an artist, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so this goes back to uh, the 1980s, which you may have heard of in history books. It's a long time ago. Um, but uh, some of the work that I have in the gallery there, the, the work in the gallery is a survey of selected works from about 1991 until like two weeks ago when I did the most recent pieces. So uh, some of those will be in here. And then after we finish talking, we can do a little walkthrough of the show. Uh, there's also catalogs of the show that we're selling for 10 bucks. So hopefully you brought all your money. And you know Christmas is coming and the holidays and all that. So buy some catalogs. All right, so prehistory until 1994. So I went to art school and I drew a lot of models and uh, did learn to paint and learn to draw and all that. Uh, this is a, an acrylic painting on cardboard that I did some point in the 1980s. Um, in the late 80s, I was doing pieces like this, which involved masks and shadows. These were done on black paper, like a heavy paper with basically acrylics or tempera paint. So I did a few of these. They're all based on photos either that I took or that I found. So here's a few more of those. Uh, this is actually a self-portrait that I did in late 80s, I would say, maybe before graduate school. Uh, this one never went anywhere. I wound up throwing it away at a certain point. This is as far as I got, and I took a picture of it. Uh, I was being self-referential. That's a, the other painting that I just showed you on the wall back there. So you can see that. Uh, this is a, a painting I did of, of my uh, ex-wife and our cat who refused to stay still. So the cat wound up being a shadow against the wall there. And there's also a million little cat designs on the wall there too. Here are some uh, pastel drawings that I did in, in also in the late 80s, maybe early 90s. Uh, for some reason, I was, uh, I was interested in shadows and in masks and in identity, how we perceive ourselves, how we show ourselves to other people, what the shadows mean, is it us, is it them, uh, kind of working through some things that way. Uh, this is a big painting that I did around 19... 89 or so. Um, it's not on canvas. It's on some kind of a fabric that I found someplace. I would find, I had just moved to LA, had no money, and I would just find stuff on the street and I would paint on it. You know, so I found this fabric, which you can see sort of some vestiges of it over here. It was a floral pattern. Um, and this was probably like eight feet by six feet. It was big. Uh, but this is the first appearance of one of the classical figures. Uh, so that would have been around 1989. And a couple of birds, and I, I still like classical figures, and I still like birds. Here's another big piece that I did then uh, based on photography. There's a couple of, uh, a couple of paintings of Eisenhower and Nixon golfing, and there's a drawing there of uh, World War II. Uh, this is that same fabric that was underneath the other painting. Um, and since they were golfing, I thought we should be able to join in, so I set up a little putting green in front of that. Most of this old stuff, you know, as you, you move, you have kids, you know, your life goes on, things suddenly become like, do I really want to store this anymore? You know, so at a certain point, this all kind of went away. This is another big piece that I did in graduate school. 
uh, based on found photography from magazines. This was an ad in something, and that was a, a picture from World War II, but this was probably eight feet tall and 15 feet across. And then I got into like not only the, the, the width and height, but also the depth of the, of the pieces. And I started basically making assemblages um, where they came off the wall a little bit. And I got handy with tools. And you know, people, when they see my heads, they're like, well, how did you cut them out? Well, I used a jigsaw because back then I had to figure out how to use tools. And I you know, just kind of figured out how to do it. Uh, so this is, um, this is canvas on a, on a wood framework. And it's sort of angled in. Uh, it looks almost like a, a music speaker. You know, it's kind of angled in. Uh, here's another one where I basically created a huge box, probably eight feet tall by 16 feet wide or something like that. And I put canvas all over it, um, painted the inside, painted the outside, uh, hung the, the inner image from bungee cords and grommets. And, uh, and uh, I still have this image, but th the rest of it went away at some point. And the bungee cords I used for years and years. Uh, but they finally have like since died. I think I have one left that has no no uh, bounce to it at all anymore. Um, so they're getting more and more theatrical and three dimensional. Which sometimes when you do work, you just do the work and it takes you where it wants to take you, and you don't really know where it's going to go. Like I didn't plan to do any of these things and get three dimensional. It just kind of happened, you know. So sometimes you just have to let the work guide you into different directions. And this is, you know, a continuation of the shadows theme that I had earlier. Uh, this is another one of those big old pieces. It's eight by eight. Uh, it's deep. It's about a foot deep. And then across the front of it is a, a lifeboat with some lights in the water, like it could have been a flare or something like that, uh, hung by bungees. I, I was also into patterns, floral patterns as well. Um, this piece, this is canvas, and that's some kind of uh, plywood stuff. I don't think it's quite plywood. It's some kind of wood. Uh, did a little spray painting on here. That was my first experience with spray paint until some of these pieces. Uh, this is all plywood. I get a lot of my art supplies at Home Depot. So yeah, they know me there. Uh, this one is gone. You know, At some point, it, it went away. And these are all like. I think that was an ad. This is Maximilian Schell, the, the uh, actor. I think that was another ad. Uh, I was talking a little bit about identity and how people envy other people, but then you know they, they try to make themselves look like other people as well. Uh, some more classical figures. So to talk about the classical figures for a minute, the work that you're going to see over there, modern history, the theme that runs through it is my fascination with uh, Greek and Roman classical antiquities. And they kept popping up in my work from an early time. And uh, even to this day, when I do things, I can see the influence of them. So that was the premise to put this show together. So here's a, a couple of, um, I think that's the Venus, the Milo from behind. Uh, I had been to Paris and taken a lot of pictures in the museums. Uh, so, and I was, it was the 80s, early 90s. So there was a lot of like juxtaposition of, of imagery going on, layering of imagery, uh, appropriation of imagery. And I also liked pop art. So there's some of that popping up in this too, no pun intended. Okay, And that led to this, which is one of the heads on the wall over there. So um, at a certain point, I thought I really like these, these Greek and Roman uh, busts especially, the portraiture kind of things. Uh, so I, I wanted to make some, but I, I've never taken a sculpture class. So I thought, well, I'll just make some flat ones. You know? So I found these images of the, of, of, the, uh, of the bus in an old textbook. And they were like this big in the textbook. And this is pre-Photoshop days, pre-everything. So I would take the textbook, and I'd have a bunch of change, and I'd go to the copy machine. And I would enlarge it, and then I would enlarge that one, and then I would enlarge that one, and it would wind up having all these pieces, and it would be getting more and more gritty and distressed looking, which I liked. So 
I wound up gluing them on to, uh, to plywood and putting some heavy varnish on top. I don't even know what the varnish was. It was something that somebody had left in the studios that I was sharing at Cal State LA where I was doing my MFA at the time. So I don't know if it's just gonna self-destruct or explode at some point. I, I have no idea, like I've never lit matches near it. So, um, and anyway, that, that's what kind of gives it the skin effect on top. Uh, so I had these heads without the, the squares cut out. And at a certain point I felt like, well, I'm just trying to fool the eye here with these two dimensional sculptures. I really feel like I need to let people know what the structure is like so that they don't have to like stick their head behind there to try to figure it out. So I basically just cut out a little of the front to mimic the background, to mimic what was going on behind the scenes. So that way you, you could see what it looked like. And I liked, um, I, you know, it was very monochromatic, but then I added fluorescent paint behind and also fluorescent, the same color fluorescent paint on the squares on the front, which would create a, a bounce effect, a halo effect of color on the walls. And you, you know, you can see them a little bit there. It, it depends on how, and how much light you have hitting them. So I did a bunch of these. I think they're all there pretty much. So I'll just kind of zip through these. I think I used uh, five colors because I had five colors. So, you know, sometimes you go with what you have, right? So those were the five that I did. I did a really big one, which is over there, a standing figure, which I didn't do the, uh, the show in the structure on this one, and I was happy with it, so I just kept it the way it is. And that one is, has a, a pink behind. That's what they look like from behind, in case you're wondering. And these are the torsos that are hanging 